So uh, in case you guys forgot, and I know you probably did, this is the 10th episode of Hot Takes and Streaming Breaks. Oh, yeah. Wow. You're supposed yeah. to provide pancakes. So earlier today, <laughs> coincidentally, I actually brought in uh, big cups, the Reese's big cups with the Cocoa Puffs in them. Or not Cocoa Puffs, but Reese's Puffs in them. Uh-huh. Doesn't but, sound like a pancake, though. Well, it's really close. <laughs> You've really disappointed us today. You know what? <laughs> and did those make it to here? Yeah, they did. They did. No, they made it here. They did. They. They, they made it the here. Kitchen. They were. In the, I don't know if they are anymore. I don't know, but our sign is blinking. Our sign is doing whatever it wants. Sometimes it's an <laughs> avatar too. If you're listening to this, we have a TV panel that's got our logo on it here in the in the studio eight hundred nine sixty thirty five podcast studio thing. Uh, and sometimes it flicks to Avatar Way of the Water. We are not sponsored by Avatar <laughs> to the Smurf movie Way of Water. No. However, uh, it likes to channel. It's not magenta having, or well, it's not magenta because it's it's display. If it were printed, be magenta. What the heck is it on here if it doesn't display red? It's red, RGB. Yeah. So it's got great. So it's green and blue that work, and then the red doesn't. I'm just thinking about mm. how I want to name the monitor James Cameron. So anytime mm. we talk about James Cameron, we're just talking about this monitor that <clears> insists <throat> on being blue. And then we have a drink. And then, and then we have a drink. <laughs> and then we end up dead. And it's like, that was only an hour long. What the heck happened? Uh, so today, I'll have you guys know, before we get into this episode, this was my second day riding into work. And it was an adventure. Cause I'd on your bike? On my bike. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm this like, is okay, the bike. riding into work. You, yeah. you, 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 <laughs> you do something here. Usually I float, usually I float yeah. in. Oh, okay. I've yeah. got a magic carpet. Yeah. Uh, nice. That's thrilling. No, it was. it's a seven and a half miles i thought you were gonna say seven and a half hours i was like Dang. i was about to i'm like oh it's <laughs> a journey i would have needed some water um and a bathroom break probably but hopefully it, hopefully <laughs> make sure i don't know i'm still getting used to that seat and i'm debating whether i need a softer seat or i just need to write it more so that my seat my personal seat is ready for the seat <laughs> i think that's where i'm at I don't know. Yeah, but it's a lot of fun. I've never ridden that far on a bike ever before, and it's all downhill. I haven't done the other way yet, um, but while it's a little bit warmer, but riding in the street is so interesting yeah. and getting used to, again, we were talking about gears. I was talking about gears last time around. Gears of war? Or? Yeah. <laughs> gears, when you're going up that hill and you're like, argh, argh, all of a sudden you grab your lancer and it's yeah. just like yeah, you're chainsawing. And, yeah, and there's yeah. no one else there. So it's just like you're carving up your leg or something like yeah. that. It's like, why did I do this? What kind of fantasy, terrible fantasy is this? Yeah. It's the final imagine. fantasy. Oh, wow. Yeah. Which number? I don't know, but this How is many? the Oops All Gaming podcast. I yeah, think, isn't it is. It? Yeah, today, yeah, today we're going to talk about a lot of uh, gaming. Isn't that, that's the fun trope. It's like, well, how can it be Final Fantasy when there's 17 of them? <laughs> mm. Or tw- I guess there's like 20 with all the, or 30 or 40 with all I the spinoffs if, and stuff. I don't know if anybody's laughed at that joke in a good 15 years. <laughs> I just did. Yeah, we were talking about stuff that we don't like people doing. And I remember I was on Twitter and I'm like, uh, remember on Twitter you would do. Well, are you back me? on Twitter? I've been on. So I, did, I got rid of my personal account, uh-huh. but I've been on Twitter oh. writing it out. Until mm. the sun scorches the earth and there's and boils away the oceans and all that stuff, mm. uh, but there was there was a thing where you'd have like Will Wheaton and stuff. They'd be like, "Name of location, I am in you." Oh yeah, and, and it's like that is horrifyingly awful. Mm-hmm. And people kept saying it. That's like a Chris Hardwick thing. I remember saying it. <laughs> I've said it. Victoria, I was. Are you probably- still on Twitter? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Cancel it now. Yeah. yeah. I've definitely said it. I think I might have been in at I'm least sure in I've college at the time. But I, was, I said it just because of Will Wheaton always said it. Oh, so I was, my house. My, I am in was you. Was he known for saying that or something? I just every time we went somewhere and he was there, I'd see it because I, I think I follow him and <laughs> yeah. And then of so you I, do. yeah. And what, then what, it's the like five defaults. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like you go to a con and he's going to be there, right? So then. Then I'd know, like, is this is this an actual con to go to? Is Will Wheaton here? And then, yeah. And then I'd see Phoenix. I am in you. I'm like, okay, well, then I think this is a con to go <laughs> it must to. Must be legit. <laughs> yeah. if Will Wheaton's in you. And, yeah. and, and you realize, like, they're they're getting they're getting 
usually when they show up, they're getting a paycheck from the festival organizers Mm -hmm. or the con overnight organizers. And then they, you know, they make their money on top of that. Right. It's not an advance or anything. It's just like show up Mm -hmm. because then we get to put you on the huge concert that you're here. Yeah, exactly. Phoenix Mm -hmm. comic con. I am in you. Maybe that's like a contract thing that he has and he has to announce like an obligate. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense though. Mm -hmm. I'm, I don't, I will never be an influencer. Fingers crossed, but I'm waiting for the Not like. If you cross tw- your fingers like that, right. well, like as how double, Spock would cross his fingers. <laughs> Definitely not going to be an influencer like that. Live long and prosper. Also, sign this EULA because you have an embargo on this new energy drink. Right. That what is it called? A Spock's drink. Oh. Thanks for breaking it's Eula. called Logic. <laughs> oh, Lord. You got Logic in the blue can. Uh, you get Emotion in the red can. Mm. Yeah. And it's got Leonard Nimoy. Not. Zachary Quinto's Spock. I'm, the, I'm proud you remembered him. Yeah. That's awesome. That's the only thing I really know him from. So American Heroes. Horror Story? Uh, he was in See? Heroes. Yeah. Yeah. He's in Things. Yeah. And that's about it. Yeah. I think. <laughs> I think I think I think well, that I mean, was like a decade ago. Heroes was a long show, long running yeah. show, good show. For what, one season? <laughs> no. A long running show for one season. <laughs> no, it was good until Writer's Strike. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. What was it doomed before then though? No. Definitely okay. not. Okay. Don't talk bad about that show. <laughs> oh, man. It's Speaking... such a good show. Save the cheerleaders, save the world, you know? I remember when I was a thing. <laughs> I remember when I was a thing. Speaking of things that are things, let's start the show. <sighs> Look at this show that we're doing. Yeah. Hello and welcome to Hot Takes and Stream Breaks, the bi-weekly pop culture podcast brought to you by 6035 Media. I put the right name in here this time. Woo. I'm your host, reporter Nick Graven, and joining me in studio, I did not remove the virtually. I am really behind on this. <laughs> the guy who watches too much TV over to my right here, Kelly Karanetsky. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing okay. That's fantastic. <laughs> and then in front of me, because we moved around this table, we're all in the view now. We've got account executive... Victoria Constantino, how are you doing? I'm fantastic. Fantastic. We've ready got ready for some spicy takes. Oh my god, are you ready to receive the spicy takes, and or are you ready to deliver the spicy takes? Well, considering this is maybe the last podcast before Valentine's Day, oh. I think we could all give and receive some spicy takes. This mm. is the show that you give to the person you love. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to get, now I want to get some, like, polos in pink with, like, hot takes and streaming breaks in the, in the stitched in. Embroidery. Qual- embro- whatever. And <laughs> <laughs> industrialized onto here, yeah. apply, applied, uh, and then, like, some hats. Oh, yeah. Uh, in, the, in that, like, baby Pepto-Bismol pink? Yes. Okay. Absolutely, and they're Pepto Bismol boxes too, so we're always delivering them. And inside, it's just what like an origami foldout. It says "Hot Takes." Oh, mm. yeah. Wow. I'm gonna go to the board and yeah. see if we can get something like that for um, whatever it is that we do down here <laughs> for Valentine's Day. For Valentine's Day, or just forever, mm. because we are the gift that keeps on giving forever. I mean, we didn't have, didn't stop for holiday break. Oh, we kept going. We kept going. We did and not that's how stop. we made it to episode 10. Wow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Except this is technically episode 11 because we lost episode 3. And that was entirely my <sighs> fault. because. So we should have had pancakes last week. Yeah, exactly. So oh, I am totally geez. void. I don't, I'm not in any trouble well, whatsoever. No, no, no. Yeah, but last week you should have been in trouble. Yeah, and now I'm not. I, uh, Dad, I'm not in trouble. <laughs> Mom said I was in trouble. Dad said I'm not. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, our main event today, we are going over the first four episodes of The Last of Us. Did you ca- get caught up, too? I'm caught up. We are all caught up. I'm good. You're good. We're good. I've been good. That's good. <laughs> good. <laughs> but before that, we're going to get into the news. We've got a lot of gaming news today, and I was telling Victoria here before you got in that I did not realize it until I printed it out. It's like... This is all gaming. So this is the Oops All Gaming News. Mm. And I started looking like, hey, maybe there's some movie news. I'm like, the scroll, scroll, scroll. No, nah, we're good. I'm mm. all right. <laughs> so this first story uh, is for Victoria. Woohoo. <laughs> From IGN, 
Ghost Story Games' Judas is currently planned for release by March 2025. Good lord, that's a long time. Yeah. This comes from Take-Two's quarterly earnings report, which outlines that it has 87 total games planned for release between fiscal 2023, the fiscal year we're in now, which concludes at the end of March, and fiscal 2025, which ends at the end of March 2025. Speaking to IGN ahead of the earnings release, I asked Zelnick if Judas was included in that 87 number, and he said yes. Keep going. Keep going. Keep oh, going. there is a yeah. part two. Yes, there is a part two there. We did have some slippage in the last few years, he said. We feel really stable right now. I feel great about our upcoming schedule. Of course, there's always the possibility of some slippage, but the team seem to be functioning really well, and I'm optimistic about delivering great titles to the marketplace on an ongoing basis. Yeah, isn't that great? So this is almost a nothing burger um, because he's just broadly speaking about everything. These 87 games that they're talking about through the next two years, That's a lot of games. That is a ton of games. But when you consider half of them are NBA, 2K, whatever, like uh, then it's like, oh, okay. But yeah. still, 43 yeah. and a half games is a lot of games. It, and <laughs> and <laughs> the at least 20 and a half are the Game Boy Advance ports. Of <laughs> NBA. <laughs> Is that yes. what the notes say? No. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so do they count? Do they count each, like... Uh, Skew? Yeah, I th- I I don't I don't know if it's indiv- individual skew or if it's the actual game and then they like count the the the, the ports or the cross because I you, you know you, you build a we know we're game developers you all you have to do is just <laughs> right. open up your IED mm-hmm. your development studio and yeah. you go this save is, as PS five yeah. game yeah and then PS four yeah and then, and then a special edition for each one which yeah is a different cover art in right all case right exactly yeah. and, and then, then Xbox and then PC mm-hmm. and then Game Boy save yeah. it right Game Boy exactly Game Boy, yeah. and yeah. DS. And Neo and Switch, Geo, yeah, and Switch, yeah. yeah, Switch is still out there, and we Linux, need a mobile version too, and uh, mobile version, yeah, Linux, Mac, yeah, yeah, no, and no, the, no. don't forget the Mac mm. port, yeah. Mm. Nobody no? on Mac plays NBA 2K. <laughs> I, you know, this <laughs> is a chicken and egg that. thing where it's like if w- they, if they did a 2K game, an NBA 2K game That'd for be the Mac, number one seller, exactly, like Wouldn't Steve Jobs would show up yeah. and be like, "Man, I've been really, you know, I'm really <laughs> passionate about design, but I really want to dribble a ball on my machine, right? Yeah." Mm. Maybe more Tim Cook, I guess. Yeah, maybe <laughs> now. Sorry, Tim Apple. Um, yeah, so Judas is famously, and it's been now a month and a half since they unveiled it at the VGAs, the Video Game Awards. You weren't here, unfortunately. You're going to talk to us about that. And I figured you have had the hottest take of them all. I have the hottest take of them all? Yeah, on Judas. On Judas? Yeah. All right. It lo- Oh, oh, <laughs> oh no. I was in uh, I just I feel like I'm going like to get in trouble. Oh, um, no. It, it looks fine. <laughs> you heard it here first. Sure. It, it, looks it, fine. Looks, it looks fine. Um, I, it looks like a game. It looks like a game. It looks like Borderlands. Um, like that wacky. It doesn't look like Borderlands. It looks like a Bioshock clone. But with Borderlands humor and characters. I don't know about that. There is one clip in that trailer that is staged or whatever gaming term you use. Exactly like one of the starting scenes in the first Bioshock. Sure. And that's when I checked out. I was like, there's homage. And then James. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> there's homage and then there's doing the same thing again and I am extremely worried about that I of all people want another Bioshock game uh-huh, they but, did one um, they did I, two of them they did three of them thank you did they infinite two and infinite I'm sorry the sequels there was two sequels there's three of them total yeah three of them total yeah, yeah exactly. exactly I haven't played infinite since it came out Mm. I, I've played it within the past year, yeah. I think, just mm. because I had a PS5 and wanted to play yeah, something. I'm, I'm bored. Let's just play this. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and I am I would love a new Bioshock. Um, and if that's They're making the, one. That's, well. Sean that's Elliott's what, the designer. Well, that's what Judas is. But in space. But in space. Yeah, Rapture is now. I just, I'm holding my breath. Yeah. We'll see. And that's how spicy it gets. <laughs> Yeah, uh, 
to, are you are you uh, entitled to the oxygen from your tank? No, says the space god of space. <laughs> That took me a second to figure out. Uh, yeah. I it's I'm ex- tentatively excited considering it's been ten years this year, like in a month or so since Infinite came out, mm-hmm. and they fired everyone nine years ago, yeah. almost everyone, and redid the studio as it used to be Irrational, and then it became Ghost Stories, and they haven't released anything since, and there's been rumors over the years. Uh, of mismanagement and Ken Levine being a perfectionist and also not knowing what he wanted at all ever during development. So that's pretty great. Hmm. So yeah, uh, just highly skeptical. Yeah, highly skeptical. I think I think uh, if Potential's we're there. yeah, even there's been some slippage. You know, a few years. So that's a great term. Did you you never beat Infinite? Did you? No, I don't beat any game. So. Right. No, you don't beat any game unless you like have to platinum or get all the achievements or beat it on the hardest difficulty. <laughs> you don't need to finish Infinite. Yeah. The ending is the best part. Well, I'm the sure ending cutscene is the best part. Yeah, you can go on YouTube for that. Yeah, <laughs> but you but it's been like eight years or something, I, so it's like it's would you even makes it? I mean, it, it barely sense. made sense then, but like. Oh. Now that you've been removed from the game for so long, like it's vivid what is in this? my head. So, oh, okay, yeah. photographic yeah. memory. So, yeah. it's old news to say that Bioshock Infinite's gameplay is not the best. Mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I re- yeah, I distinctly remember that from the original game too. It's mm. like this is great, except when I have to play it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have that problem with Remedy games too, mm. except for Max Payne. Yeah, think about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I was like, yeah, I think that's the only one. I haven't played Control though. I need to play Control. I've I hear it's it. great. I got it for free on um, EGS. Have it, but I don't think my machine will run it very well, <laughs> unless it's a slideshow. All right, number two. This is yours. Okay. So this is from Apple Insider. Mist is coming back to iPhone and iPad for 30th anniversary. A fully 3D version of Mist dubbed Mist Mobile. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's really original. It's Mist Touch. <laughs> right? <laughs> I missed. Um, <laughs> that was so funny is getting an iPhone and iPad release. Created 30 years ago, the legendary puzzle game Myst was a commercial success and even helped accelerate the sale of CD-ROM drives. It's true. Oh, I didn't know that. How did you not know that? I, I, that was like that was like we need to buy a new computer because I Myst. can't play Myst. Yeah. Hmm, okay. I bought this CD coaster. Yeah. Wow. Well. <laughs> now Myst Mobile will make its way to iPhone and iPad, driving iPad and iPhone sales. I'm just kidding. I just made that up. <laughs> I've been waiting to buy I an iPhone. I was getting really right? excited for that. Like, I was yeah, like, like, dang. Like, yeah. this is, this Maybe is they'll have why. a product red for just Mist. <laughs> like, you know, Samsung's <laughs> like, man, how are we going to sell phones if we don't have Mist? <laughs> right? Exactly. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. Okay. So it says the title is a port of the 2021 remastered original, which has been available to play on PC and Oculus headsets. Yeah. So you get your VR experience. Uh, I played, I almost bought Mist. My dad was on tour. He had to go overseas, and uh, I'm just going to tilt this camera up just a little bit so you can see more. I think James Cameron's been really messing with it. Yeah. I think that's what's going on. Um, um, perfect. Isn't yes. that great? Oh. If you've been watching this far, which I don't know how long that is, it's fixed now. Uh, so my dad left for Australia. He's like, I'm going to buy you two games. I'm like, cool. Um, Missed. And I, the second copy of Mist. I almost <laughs> just in case. So I got in, Dark in Forces. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I got Dark Forces and Mist, and I'd never played Mist. I always just remember it on shelves. It's like that's a popular game. I should probably own or play that or something. And they convinced me not to. Uh, good parenting. And uh, <laughs> I don't remember what the other game was. Maybe it was Grand Theft Auto Two. That wasn't out yet. Oh. This is ninety five. So the original wasn't even out. Oh. Yeah. Jurassic Park Chaos Island. No. Damn it. And not Trespasser either. So <laughs> I remember playing Trespasser at like 320 by 200 on my machine that didn't have a 3D accelerator. And it was like everything was dithered and ugly. And it ran at like 5 to 10 frames per second mm-hmm. at like half clock speed. So moral of the story is I didn't get missed. And then my friend brought it over a couple years later and I'd play Mist for the first time. And we play it for like, I don't know, 20 minutes or something. And it was, there, there's like early on, there's that like power conduit puzzle where you have to set everything up, flip a switch. And if you don't get it right, you have to go back up like three screens or something, f- 
flip the transformer and then come back down and try it again. And I've played Obduction, actually. I streamed Obduction like two years ago or something. And that's a pretty all right game for mm. a puzzle game. But I don't like puzzle games. The moral of the story is um, Mist is for sadists and people who do not <laughs> like actually playing games. Mm. It's not a fun jigsaw puzzle. It is a puzzle that is designed to make you hate puzzles it is uh, a weapon you've got a whole community that is out there ready to grab that spicy take and run with it yeah i remember reading the pc gamer article for a review for riven which mist fans love riven like riven is a holy artifact came out like 97 or 98 i think and every adventure game of that era especially as they were bumping up the resolution they were finally getting like 640 by 40 Ew. yeah i know <laughs> uh they the uh the puzzles were such that you were basically just clicking on every single pixel to see if there was something in the environment or it's like please let me do something <laughs> let me do anything in this game um how and many pixels is that total 640 by 480 hang on I don't have a pen. <laughs> I was going to say, let's do some let's long, do some long multiplication. Yeah. Hang on. We're going to find out how That's many cheating. pixels is. No, it's not cheating because I just, I don't have Did my. Did you multi- have that people, back in People 95? listening. My multiplication <laughs> tables went to 12 by 12. Okay. Not 640 by 480. <laughs> <laughs> That's absurd, Kelly. Why would you ask me that? There's. Why did I bury the calculator that far deep? Okay. 307,200 pixels. That's a lot of clicks. That's a third of a megapixel. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That was. They had to click that many times. Yeah. <laughs> on each frame. On each and, frame. Wow. Well, thankfully, it would like it, it was usually it was you would there would be a movie and then it would bring you to a still shot with maybe some animated bits in there. Mm-hmm. So at least it was like you know not twenty four frames per second you're having right. to click, but you're like still I guess I gotta start clicking now. Yeah. I'll start counting. <laughs> It's like Diablo or something. Right. Anyway, uh, but now you can just touch it. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I actually downloaded, uh, was it Diablo Legend? The new one that everyone hates. It's the free to play or the pay to win uh, one. Anyway, I downloaded that for my phone and I got like halfway through the tutorial. I'm like, I'm good. I'm all right. How much money did you pay in the tutorial? Uh, Nothing, actually. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. I kept my (laughs) wallet safe, even though I can just double click the Apple Pay and. Right. It. I was on a, a no it was it was a free download yeah free to play yeah, yeah. the words I just said yeah. uh, and I, I was thinking I was in the Apple Arcade trial and it was one of those mm. like, that's five dollars a month but it's not it's just a game you just download it and then you give it your money <laughs> all right this one is a fun one because it makes me sad go ahead number three there all right from Kotaku Nintendo's big Mario Kart ride at Universal can only be ridden by thin people. Ugh. Come on. An elaborate 3D and 4D ride, according to the official page for Mario Kart's Bowser's Challenge. Why is that so hard to say? The single-user ride takes attendees through a variety of Mario-themed settings brought to life with cutting-edge technology. On the ride, you'll individually or collectively team up to foil Team Bowser's plans to grab that golden cup before Mario and his friends do. But, as the Wall Street Wall Street Journal observed in an article highlighting the limiting weight requirements, which can be found on the official app for park navigation and line management, quote, Guests whose waistline is at least 40 inches or greater may not be accommodated on the ride. The app's copy indicates that there's a test seat available to gauge whether or not an attendee meets these requirements. Given that the average waist circumference in the U.S. is just around 40 inches, this certainly seems likely to exclude a good number of folks. Uh, this could exclude me. Just a little thing there. There. Oh, good grief. Yeah. Mario is not – Mario is an exercise enthusiast, okay? He wants he, – he, he plays tennis. He plays golf, golf. He rides a cart, which you would not assume is any kind of physically intense or at all. And but, yet he is still a plus-size plumber man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah, and I, I'm sure his BMI is through the roof. He's got to, like, watch his cholesterol. And he's kind of – you know, he's getting older, so he's probably scheduled – mm-hmm. You know, colonoscopy and, and all that stuff. Um, I don't know if Mario could ride this 
Right, and I think only Bowser could get in if he bullied everyone in and potentially got decapitated or something along the way. But what is it when theme parks start discriminating against people because of how much Reese's they eat on a tip? (laughs) That's not fair. It really isn't. I remember uh, The Simpsons. Homer was fat. And he's like, I'm so fat. And he'd get step on the scale and it'd be like, at, back then it'd be like, oh my gosh, it's an overwhelming amount. It was 225 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, he, he lost like a couple, couple pounds during that episode. It's been like 20 years since I've seen it. The point is people have changed and rides are different. And I think this used to be, this, this was some other ride. I don't know if this was Orlando. I can't remember. Because they got Orlando and La- Los Angeles, Burbank. Where's it, Glendale? Where and where is it? Wait, where, which park? Universal. Universal. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, there's only two of them. There's, this reminds me a lot of um, that, like, Men in Black ride. Mm. Uh, have you guys been to Universal? I went to Universal, like, 20 years ago. And they had a Men in Black ride. And they, and they had Back to the Future and E.T. And I think all of them had been ripped out and replaced with something else, <laughs> like Rick and Morty or something. And I almost talked about Rick and Morty this week. And it's like, no, that's a little too dour for this What's show that? yeah <laughs> yeah that was a bit much but standards have changed and um they're sh- they're just shy of them giving everyone a vr headset because they were doing 3d goggles or 3d glasses i should say for the longest time but if you're gonna get this fully interactive thing you gotta be thin i i gotta say i i almost want almost not quite. I almost want to commend them in using inches instead of pounds, as terrible as that might seem, because I feel like that's maybe a step in the right direction. Yeah. I, I understand that you can't make everything available to everybody at the same time. 40? Yeah. <laughs> that's it? Like, yeah. do you have any idea how many people you're excluding? But- like Shaq. Shaq's not getting on this ride. (laughs) Right. I don't know. I don't know. This is also, I suck at theme parks and I don't go on many rides. And this would be the one I go on and I couldn't do it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That would be the only one you would want to give. Yeah. I want to see, I want to see Bowser. (laughs) (laughs) There's nothing else. There's there's nothing. Harry Potter. I'm good at the snack line. Uh, Actually, I did. um, No, they hadn't put in Harry Potter yet. I think I don't. I can't remember if this was the old Spider-Man ride from back mm. in the day, or something like that. They had um, when I was there. They had an Adventures. There's that was like Universal Studios, and then like Adventures of Fun. Not, no, that that's Iowa. Adve- Worlds of Fun and Adventure Oceans of Fun. Remember that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You remember that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Des Moines. Yeah, was yeah. it in Iowa? I thought it was in yeah. Nebraska. No, no, Nebraska's lame. We didn't have anything. We had we had Funplex. Oh, Funplex. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, had the tall roller yeah. coaster. Mm. Uh, and then they had, maybe it was Adventureland was in Des Moines and that was in Kansas City. Either way, we didn't go to any of that. They might as well been on the moon. It was, we did, it's what happened. So, uh, but I'm not very good at theme parks. So this, yeah, this would definitely, the, the, the big Mario Kart ride is the one that Nick will get on. Mr. Raven, he, that's the only ride you have to reserve a seat for him. Oh, look, he's too big. Can't ride on that. Guess he's going to have to slurp down some more pancakes. <laughs> great segment. Uh, last one. Last one of the news. Here you go, Kels. All right. So this is from Engadget. It says 343 is reportedly starting from scratch on Halo development after layoffs. 343 Industries in Halo may be here to stay despite Microsoft's mass layoffs, but that doesn't mean it's business as usual for the franchise. Bloomberg sources claim that 343 is effectively restarting Halo development between multiple changes that include the loss of at least at least 95 jobs, including directors and key contractors. Notably, the studio is reportedly switching to Epic's Unreal Engine after both a leadership shuffle and struggling with its aging in-house platform, Slip Space. That's a, a word. Yeah. Um, it's even breaking from its familiar story-driven gameplay, according to tipsters. Yeah. So 
Interesting. Last I figured it, it needs to be called 343 now. Since yeah, yeah, I noticed since that, and yeah. I was just like, I'm going to let him go with that. <laughs> hey, they, they're restarting, so I'm restarting how I say it. 343. Yeah, 343 industries now. <laughs> I actually love – so speaking of that, I actually – I'll get um, – Teams messages through my AirPods, <laughs> and and uh, uh, it'll be like um, from Teams, such and such a room. Victoria Constantino says, um, visit this website https colon backslash slash 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 youtube dot com slash view slash id equals three million four hundred seventy eight thousand three hundred, and it's like, and it does not stop. It does not. Also, series terrible, but that's a whole other thing. But Re- really quick, since we're on that, there yeah. was one thing that on AirPods that I was really surprised that Siri did. So somebody told me a date, right? <clears throat> and it said it was, I can't remember what the date it was. Let's just say it was February 1st, but they put one Feb, but it, Siri, whenever it, it announced it, it automatically it February 1st, I was like, whoa, I wow. thought that was really interesting. No, like, no, Siri, I was talking about one Feb. Right? Only yeah. one Feb. Yeah. yeah. There's only one dash Feb in right. this yeah. world, okay? <laughs> yeah. And it happens once a year. Yeah. I just wow. like, I thought it just the way that it, it translated the date into American was interesting. You know, I wish it did more tricks like that and became something useful. I mean, it's useful to me. I wish I could <laughs> uninstall Siri and install Google Assistant no. and it would make everything I believe so her name, much. Oh, isn't her name Cortana? No, that's Microsoft. No, that's Microsoft. Oh, oh yeah, that's yeah, true. They Duh, banned it. Of course. Yeah. yeah the, <laughs> speaking of Bixby. axing things. Yeah. B- <laughs> speaking of axing things and Microsoft. Yeah, Bixby. Yeah, that's <laughs> great. I had a I had a Note 8 and it had the Bixby button. Mm-hmm. And I spent so much energy either disabling Bixby or trying to remap the Bixby button to anything other than Bixby because mm-hmm. I never and it's got a weird logo. Anyway, last episode, <laughs> we talked about layoffs at the mixed uh, mixed reality. Microsoft, like everyone else, was laying off a whole bunch of people because they overhired during the pandemic and no one was working or whatever the heck they were doing. And uh, apparently they are dedicated to HoloLens, kind of an update from that last episode. So their mixed reality, augmented reality dreams are still alive, but to what extent, we don't know. But 343 was one of the other parties that were affected by that as well as some uh employees at like zenimax bethesda and they just had their showcase actually not that long mm. they should have like redfall a couple other games they're gonna have a separate event for starfield and they also released hi-fi rush which i downloaded immediately and have not played mm. so fantastic but in regards to 343 uh i have i had halo fatigue around two so this was 2004 and i bought halo 3 because FOMO and I have not really cared about Halo in like 20 years and we played that's impressive actually yeah why yeah. oh I'm still very much into Halo but oh. in the way I didn't I don't want to interrupt what you were gonna no say. no go ahead because we might be reaching the same point I could care less about destiny <laughs> oh, that's not where I was going. But I played a lot of Destiny, not as much as Kelly has, yeah. or or the second one. It was the first one. No, we, but you played the second one. Oh yeah, but yeah. not as much. Yeah. Oh, because I mean, it's it's more, it's double, it's double the Destiny. Yeah. Double well, the I, Destiny. Yeah, I just got sick of paying money. Yeah. To Destiny. Well, that's it wasn't I'm... my destiny to pay them money. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, wow. So the point I was going to get at is that I haven't liked anything that 343 has put out in Halo mm. at all. We played Halo 4 uh, on, co-op. It was a four-player co-op, if yeah, I remember right. On like, uh, what We played on the most difficult one. Too. Yeah. yeah That's Rick what you do. Legendary. 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 Yeah. 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 yeah with the, 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 I mean, we're just that good. Yeah. You know? like, <laughs> nobody else has beat it. I'm like, yeah, hey. we're just poning noobs, you know. Yeah. Was, yeah. You know the, was it the Sangheili skull with the two <laughs> blades and stuff yeah. like that? I don't know what it is they're doing. I'm playing, well, <clears throat> I'm playing as in I'm trying to play Infinite on my PC, which granted, I don't have a fancy PC. Okay. But it chugs on infinite so bad. It is so slow. And I don't know if they just do a <clears throat> awful time optimizing that game or what they do. Yeah. But I cannot get it to run well. Yeah. Which and is... I, I don't have that problem with other games. So I don't know what they're doing <clears throat> over there for something that, like you said, has been a concept for the past 20 years. Yeah. And it's interesting that the company that made Windows cannot make a game that runs well on Windows yeah. with the Halo Infinite badge on it. 
uh, I didn't like Halo 4 at all. I don't like anything that they've done with that franchise mm-hmm. ever since. They there was something there's something weird about Bungie and then Destiny. Like there's just the je ne sais quoi of what Bungie does and Joseph Staten, even though Joseph Staten came in late into like the last year to help Infinite get out the door, no one has ever been like, yo, 343, you've done an amazing job. And that's no. despite the talent there. That's despite their technical prowess. I'll tell um, them. You guys did a good job. Oh, oh man. <laughs> Thank you, Kells. Thank you, Kells. And that's not to disparage the people working there, but maybe the management is not that great and they don't know maybe. what the heck they're doing. Yeah. Or maybe it's just time for it to take a rest. Yeah, maybe it just does. I mean, we an have infinite one. An, an infinite one. We have so many shooters that are free to play now <laughs> that are honestly more fun than Halo. Yeah, Fortnite is amazing. Yeah, have you heard of that? Warzone. No. It's like PUBG, Wait, but with for, cartoons. A fort. Yeah, dude, there's fort forts in there. Tonight? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it takes and place dancing, at night. I, I only know about the dancing parts. So yeah, so. and Travis yeah. Scott had a transfer uh, concert in there. And I saw I, it. Did you? I think yeah. it was Marshmallow. Life? In fact, I just watched a video essay on Marshmallow's do a concert in Fortnite. So oh. I know it's Marshmallow. Actually. Well, but Travis Scott did one too. Maybe he did. Yeah, because I remember it. And he was. Because you were there. I was there. I was in there in the Fortnite. <laughs> You're flossing. No, is, I don't. I don't that, know if I'd that unlock the... that. Okay. I don't know what what is flossing. The dance. I know what it is. I, yeah, I know it's a dance, <laughs> but like, it, was, what is it's it? Dental you, care. You dance. God damn. It's however you want to dance. Oh. You just call it flossing. I think of I think <laughs> of what was the one that Conan like everybody does. Everybody call you boomer. Yeah, God, I know. What, what's the one that Conan does? He's like the ventriloquist or something. He's like he's like Ugh. snipping. Isn't that his dance? That is his one dance. Like Conan. Yeah, the Conan. <laughs> <laughs> Accurate. Yeah. yeah. Um, I wish three four three the best, but also I wish they would know what the hell they're doing. Figure that out. They're Put something Halo together. Games. I mean, Halo lens. Oh my god! I just figured it out. Oh man, here we are. <laughs> That's Bring what's back going Cortana. on. That's what's going on. I'm sorry, I didn't know what you said. Can you repeat that? <laughs> but she's gonna be in your face this time with the Halo lens. Hmm. Or maybe, maybe it's a monocle. <laughs> Get yourself the Halo, right. the 343 edition. Mm. I hate everything about this. <laughs> or it's a... Mi- oh, God, Dad, James! James! James, stop it! Stop it, James. All right, we're going to... The screen is blue again for those who don't uh, watch Now it's not, not that you've said oh, that. Oh, God, he yeah, heard me. J- yeah, James heard you. Well, let's get to the, this thing that we're going to talk... We're going to talk about some more games, kind of. Here we go, main Maybe. event. Uh, so we're all caught up on The Last of Us. We've already established this. And, um, I watched them all kind of in one sitting and I have to, I don't, I don't want to rehash like this entire, I actually re watched our episode from last time just to make sure I wasn't repeating what we had already said from last week. Cause last week you guys had seen the first two episodes and now there's been two more. That was yes. longer than last week. Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Last episode. Last yeah. episode. The last, last episode. two weeks of us. The last, the last oh. two weeks. Oh. oh. Did you? Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know if I posted it anywhere, but I uh, someone did a meme. It was like the Baja Blast of us. Mm. <laughs> and it was Taco Baco. And and that was like, man, that's real. I, I there's, really, there's a lot of not sponsored in The Last of Us, just saying. Yeah? Everything. Really? Yeah. yeah. What, what's I, Prominent brands, Doritos, Sara oh, Lee, uh, like I don't where, oh. yeah, everywhere. That's Starbucks just branding is, everywhere. Yeah, yeah, there's so much branding. Oh, like, it's like distress. Mortal but Kombat. Like, yeah. Oh, that I do remember because yeah. she was like, ah, but she rips down her mask and eats the <laughs> opponent and spits I, out the bones. I don't know if that was. That's my Ellie impression, by the way. Yeah, that just seemed like that was video game logic. Or yeah, like video game script. <laughs> a lot of video game script too. Which is like, interesting. She would have been way too young play that game for realsies yeah but no i was just talking about like every everywhere you go it's very distressed logos that are either very clear the arby's actually yeah arby's uh, yeah loved. i remember arby's yeah, like, loves. Loves. yeah loves yeah i remember that loves from and arby's. last one this yeah. fourth episode yeah. yeah but then but the big sarah lee truck blocking the road well 
Sometimes you just got to cheesecake your way out of there. Right. I was just like, I was like, dang, I was like, you know, I can't tell if this is sponsored or not. Uh, well, that's, <laughs> this is, I remember the big news around Transformers when G- GM went and bought, paid like $16 million to subsidize the production of that movie. And it was like Camaros everywhere, and Buicks <laughs> and, and all that stuff. Mm. Actually, even further back, uh, Matrix Reloaded. When they had all those Cadillacs, because mm. they used like I don't know, thirty or forty of those in different um, stages of being shot up, yeah. and it's like these are the new Cadillacs, and they had the new phones and Powerade, strategized architecture. I always remember that campaign. <laughs> the Matrix, the, the 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 promotional campaign around the Matrix was the or the second and third one really were absolutely incredible, and I miss that because they had like new phones and all that stuff. Anyway, Last of Us. <laughs> The first thing I felt watching uh, The Last of Us is like, man, is this 2011? Because th- <laughs> okay, this, this go is, on. I know, right? Go on. Yeah, like, have I have Pause. have I slipped back in yeah. time uh-huh. to a point where we were making zombie dramas, mm-hmm. apocalyptic, violent zombie dramas? Because we were talking last week about mm. Walking Dead, uh, World War Z, like. A it was the peak ten, of it was zombie the drama. Pe- it was peak zombie 10, 15 years ago. And that's when the this first game came out. Right. Uh, I don't remember what year it was. Was it 2010, I think? I can use a calculator. I can't determine when things come out. I don't have that knowledge. No. Anyway, but that that this is a game of that era. And so here it is, like, showing up kind of late. Like, here's this zombie thing. Like, do you remember zombies? And, like, I do from a long time ago. So a long time ago in movie and media timelines, yeah, it yeah. does feel conceptually a little old. Yeah, because mm. not okay. None of us have played the games. Right, we've right? continued okay. to not play the games. Okay. Right. Just Still yes, making it, yeah. sure I remember that right. <laughs> yes, I uh, thought you were <laughs> no, well, no. <laughs> just like, literally was there more remember. to that? No, yeah, no, I think no, I, just I, I don't know. Like I think this is. <laughs> I think it's a fresh take on stuff because I've watched all of The Walking Dead just finish that and I was upset with that. And so in what way? The ending and then knowing that there's like five different spin-offs like instead yeah. of ending the show the way they should have, they're just like maybe Why? it'll show up in a spin-off. Hmm. Why yeah. not? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so I think this is just like a fresh take on that because <laughs> I was like definitely like getting Walking Dead fatigued like Oh, another season, another bad guy somewhere, and then you can start the whole process over. Yeah. I, well, I, I hope it doesn't turn into that. Yeah. Hey, we were uh, talking last week, not last week, last episode. Thank you, Kelly, for not even saying anything. I just caught myself. <laughs> uh, like, how many shows can they make it? Because I don't know how far in the game this is. Mm-hmm. And, like, are they going to do the sequel game that takes place, like, I don't know, five, ten so years later or something? the sequel is supposed to happen in season two. I, I definitely was reading that. So oh. I guess they're doing a season per game, which oh. is pretty impressive. <laughs> How many episodes are they supposed to be doing? That I do not know. Okay. Um, and from what I've heard about folk, for, from folks that have played the game is that this is pretty on beat with the game. And also... Arguably, maybe too on beat with the game. Oh, oh, well, I'm blissfully that ignorant then. I have heard, quote, <laughs> this show is boring if you've already played the game because oh. it is maybe too much like the game. Uh. As somebody that hasn't played it, I think it's extremely compelling and maybe I should have played the game. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I have seen like, um, like video comparisons where they show like scenes. Si- frame by frame, yeah, side by side. Like, yeah. <clears throat> and, and I just think that's cool actually. Like, I don't yeah. think that's like a bad thing. I think it was really cool that they're like very faithful to the script and decided to do it. Yeah. And I, I like that too, but I'm wondering if maybe they do do it too much and, and I just don't know. Cause I haven't seen, I haven't played it. That's how you get a show greenlit. It's like, all right, I'm going to show you this game. Mm-hmm. And, um, all you have to do is just give us a little bit more money. More money, and we're gonna make this again. Mm-hmm. Don't as don't even think show, about though, as a, a show. Yeah. yeah, we're gonna take this cutscene that is a video. Sorry, am I hitting? There you go. Oh yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> I'm gonna hit. I'm gonna. We're just gonna reproduce this frame for frame. Mm-hmm. It's not gonna cost you much. Okay. Right. Right. We're just gonna green screen. Yeah. We're just gonna we'll just it. take some of the stuff out of the game and just put it in here. Yeah. Or we're and, missing stuff. And to its credit, it's like well produced. It looks good. It's like yeah. there's a there's oh, production yeah. value in here. It looks really, mm-hmm. really good. 
Mm-hmm. And I had a point in there somewhere, but it's lost. Do we want to talk about episode three? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, if we want to dive right into that, since we've already done episodes two, one and two, go watch last episode uh, about one and two, where you guys kind of talked about where they set up their aunt, they're fleeing Boston. The whole thing, they there was a, I don't know how I felt about the the fight in the Capitol and the the grenades. Spoilers, by the way. Um, big old spoilers. Big old spoilers. Yeah, yeah that's in interesting there were parts there were parts like when the, they um when they touched the the mush, the mushrooms the magic mushrooms the magic mushrooms <laughs> and it's like oh it's gonna wake up thing somewhere else and it's mm-hmm. like that was a cut scene mm-hmm. or something like that's a game mechanic yeah. like you know they're wandering around gathering stuff because they're low on supplies they need three yeah, of this don't four touch of this. this magic mushroom don't touch this magic mushroom <laughs> absolutely yeah yeah I liked how they opened the second one with the with Indonesia and Jakarta, mm-hmm. and they're like, "So how do we fix this?" Just bomb the whole city. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just, you're just screwed. Sorry, yeah, <laughs> it's just how it works. How did yeah. the cordyceps in there? Uh, so yeah, I had like there, I had a really, really good I point in there somewhere, but it's lost forever. Episode three. Episode three. You want to <laughs> you want to start that? This has been um, before I'd seen any of them. Everyone was like, "Guys, the episode." And I recalled, because I watched the last episode, I'm like, no, episode three is going to be garbage. <laughs> and you're like, oh, Nick, don't jinx it. I'm like, well, I just did. Uh, and it turns <laughs> so it's out. like episode- me and Andor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So episode three episode is not, three. is not. It's it, it's not is not. Um, it is. It is great TV. Yes, it is great. TV. And it is divergent from the game. And that makes me wonder if. That's besides the elephant in the room of we're going to have two prominently gay characters, which doesn't happen often enough. I'm wondering if that is not what is going to make the show great when he does deviate. Because, I mean, if you've seen Chernobyl, we know that Craig Mazin has a ton of potential. He's he's really great at what he does. <clears throat> I want to see it more. Mm-hmm. I want to see episodes like episode three again. Yeah. And I think that worked out. Um it's a love story mm-hmm. over the course of a very, very long time, 20 years. Something like that. Yeah. I, I, oh, I had a, a really good point. Um, I was so enthusiastic that Amy Poehler and NBC were happy to let Nick Offerman reprise his role as Ron Swanson. <laughs> that was your point? Yeah. That, no, the other point's lost forever. But this, <laughs> this, this one I've been waiting on. I was waiting uh, to spring that on you because as soon as I saw – the, the his prepper house and the, the guns and ammo magazines oh, yeah. and his wall of guns and his security it's like right. he's just playing oh, him awesome. he's yeah. just playing the bureaucrat you know yeah. uh that's that's what i but he's so handsome in this it's with the long hair and he the is. beard yeah. yeah i forgot i was like i was like yeah he didn't have long hair and, no and parks and Rec, he had so. the mustache <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 absolutely what did you think of bill He's Bill. There's Bill and Frank. Bill and yeah. Frank. Yeah. What did you think? So I'm one that hates filler episodes and backstory episodes <clears throat> of, of shows, but I think this was so early on that it was good. Like I was really surprised because it, like the show, that episode actually made me cry. So it made me cry too. Yeah. So hundred like, percent. Yeah. yeah. But I, I would like, I, I could, it was very like, there's some predictable, predictable <clears throat> parts. And so like, like I knew what was going on right away. Like I, I was like, Oh, okay. I got it. But like, I still liked it because I liked the whole prepping and then the overtime and everything like that. And then still bringing in Joel and Tess into it. So it's yeah. like, Hey, this is how we loop it together, you know, like to, to bring it back. So I thought that was, I thought that was good. Well, yeah. no, well, no, if filler episodes are great if they, if they prove to have value. They, uh, but they never do. That's why no, it's a filler. Yeah, I, <laughs> like I know, bottle episodes, right? Yeah. It, yeah, I guess it wasn't a bottle episode. It was not right? a bottle episode. You know, yeah. you're telling this story <laughs> to bring humanity and to show, you know, why it's important that they showed up here. You know, it, sure. it yeah. all had really good motivation, um, and the acting is just on par. It was, it was pretty great. It was on par. <laughs> it was kind of baseline. Yeah. <laughs> this is how I would have expected an actor yeah, to act. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know what? They were up there. They said words. Yeah. They said Did words. Things. Uh, got a paycheck. Acted stuff. The, the only like the only thing that, that I didn't like is that I would have thought like how did this little town not get discovered 
as much as one time. You know, like, well, because Fedra and all that were so busy with their QZs, and it was out in like what rural Massachusetts or something yeah. like that, like ten or twenty miles beyond. Because yeah. it, it was like ten miles outside of Boston, and then it was like another five-hour hike, yeah, or something to their compound. And then, and then it just seemed like that <clears throat> there should have been more like trading too. I thought that I really thought I was like, we're gonna see. Oh, Joel, like because it to me it seemed like Joel met him one time met them both one time mm. and then like and and then they had this friendship but that's the only one they show yeah i know yeah. so that's i i kind of i thought there was gonna be more to it i thought there was gonna be like oh yeah they do a lot of trading with him and and he did help him with the stuff you know they, i think there was <coughs> a lot of implied things but i just wanted just to see just a little bit more of that just so just to tie it back in there but other than that i thought the episode was fantastic yeah yeah I really good. I was expecting him to go out in like a blaze of glory. Like there's that uh, climax kind of like two thirds of the way through where they're mm-hmm. um, like the Raiders come in and then the Zion, they're like the gas lines everywhere and the flames and the yeah. split saws and all that stuff. Uh, and I thought like, Oh no, this is, this is when, this is when Bill's dead. This is when right? Nick Offerman's done. He's yeah. done. Yeah. You know, and here's Frank like, no, 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 you're good. You're yeah. good. You got this. It's like, no, he's dead. He's gone. Right. And, and then, then you think he's dead. Yeah. Like, and then, I definitely thought he was dead. Yeah. Then. Me too. yeah. 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 And, then, and it was fade to black. And yeah. then it's like, nope, nope. He's fine. He's okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But now the other one has a degenerative disease and it's yeah. like, Oh no! Presumably oh, no. some sort of cancer, <laughs> or brain, yeah, I it was like something. Maybe like MS or something. Yeah, yeah. Or ALS or and they, something. They kept it really vague. I don't know. I thought that was. This is not a science show. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I. <clears throat> I think that, like, you try to puzzle, piece it together, and figure. Okay, well, what does he have? How can they figure out how to cure it? In reality, it wouldn't be like that. You wouldn't know. He's just dying. You know, yeah. and they've got the meds that they've got, and that was it. So I'm actually really glad they didn't really address that much. And I thought that was actually a bigger deal that we're just not going to talk about it. All you see is somebody that's suffering. Well, that's and really good. And I really like the. Uh, you know, what? they didn't have a cure for this before all the stuff yeah. happened. So it's like, what are you going to do? Yeah. yeah. What What do you What are you going to do? I really liked how they aged them. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and ditto like uh, Pedro Pascal and, oh, yeah. and Joel uh, over the course of you know these twenty years or so. Mm-hmm. Um, I get the vibe that each episode's gonna have like kind of a mission objective because it's a the, video game. Because it's a video game, yeah. Because <clears throat> at the end of the second episode, Tess dies in a sacrifice, uh, and she's supposed to be the untalked about love interest, right? I mean, you see it in the first two episodes between her and Joel. But then now the series is really kind of hinging on Tess really meaning a lot to Joel and not to bring it up because it was so important. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it's like, I don't know if it feels really earned that, like really built out how important Tess was to Joel for me to really feel anything that. You know, this is really a source. But if it was like a se- – if this was like season two and right. a test dies at the second episode of the season two, I would feel something. But um, it, it really feels like, man, we just got – we got to get rid of Tess because at the end of chapter two of whatever, she's dead. Mm-hmm. We can't have her keep going. It's going to mess up the whole story. Right. And then yeah. episode three into episode four, they get this truck. They do camp – they camp out. And then they lose the truck like the first third, and I'm yeah. like, "Are you serious?" That is, but, a- but then they and then Joel also brought up Tess too, so it's yeah, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. So he's just like, "Wait, hold on, I thought we weren't going to talk about her." Yeah, but then let's talk about her. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, because what are we going to do? Yeah, yeah. yeah, you got we've got 24, 25 hours. It's time yeah. for some exposition. Right, let's get <laughs> going. Is the story going to take more than twenty five hours? Yeah, yeah. you yeah. want to do some yeah. character building? Right. Like, let's go. Yeah, but then immediately fall asleep. Yeah, yeah. That was that was so cool. I, I like that, and then the uh, the puns. The puns are great. Why are you pointing at me about because puns? You, because you're the, puns the woman I do in here. love puns. Oh, yes, I do, do love puns. The huh? jokes you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. the puns the pun in the book. Yeah. yeah, the pun Was book. it a pun book? <clears throat> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah I, I like those too. I thought those. I thought that was great. That, that was, was a great. a little bit of humor. I don't know. I don't, I don't know, like, I've seen, like, a lot of people not like <laughs> the actress that played. They're like, she's not, She should. they should have done somebody else. But I think she's doing a fantastic job. Oh yeah, um, yeah. I think I mentioned that last time too, but <laughs> I, I think I, she did too. Yeah, but yeah. I think I still like. I still think they have a good dynamic, like between oh, yeah. the two. Yeah, so. I I remember when the game came out, and I thought it was a um, it was a pre transition Elliot Page. Oh, I thought I, I, I thought it, that I thought well. that was like that's who they might. It's like no, it's someone else entirely. I'm like, but it looks like 
them. Like so, <laughs> and their name is a, Ellie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it like, huh? And uh, they were in uh, Beyond Two Souls. Not, I guess it would have been like five years afterward or something mm. like that. But it's like, I thought that was them mm-hmm. uh, in there, but no. So uh, them having Ellie, the actress. Um, um, I can't remember. It's like tip of my tongue. Um, she doesn't quite look like it, but she is so sassy and not having played the games, I don't know how sassy that's supposed to be. It does seem like she's, she's nailed that down from, yeah. from some of the <laughs> scenes I've seen too, that are like, you know, comparing the game and, and the, um, and the show. Yeah. It seems like she's got that just yeah. hardwired. That's her personality. That's I who mean, she and, is. And that's, you know, it's kind of what we saw in game of Thrones. You know, she was really sassy there too. She's definitely got the personality. Yeah. Yeah. I think, and she did a good job of like breaking up, like, the ending of episode three, you know, like, especially when we're like coming into the house and then like hearing eighties and like, Oh, code. Got yeah. It. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like, yeah. You know, like, and just the, you know, all that stuff. I think they did a good job. And yeah. She's, she's fantastic at this uh, with a character. So, and they made it out to Kansas city by episode four. So they're on a, uh, they're headed West from Boston because they're trying to track down a signal from, uh, Joel's brother, Tommy, Tommy. Tommy yeah. yeah. Tommy or Tony. Um, and they're going to Cody, Wyoming because they haven't heard from him. It's like, well, what else are we going to do? So let's go West and do this because the fireflies want Ellie because she's immune to this, the fungus among us. So <laughs> let's go. Yeah. And so it's a road trip show. <clears throat> essentially. Yeah. I like the emptiness of it. Mm. I, li- I like that. There's basically no one but they still hide as if potentially someone could pop along at any point yeah and take care of stuff when they when they wake up and they're camping and they wake up and it's like man and you just hear loud just like the sound of nature and and Mm -hmm. birds and insects and stuff like that and like i almost feel the cold it reminded me of when i was camping like in the boy scouts and stuff like Mm -hmm. that it's like man you guys nailed it yeah you got it yeah. That was pretty great. <clears throat> I think they, I think they just do a good job of like a lot of stuff, like a lot of like, just like this is how it is, you know, like and then like uh, a lot of not like no emotion type thing, or but like but showing emotion too. I don't know. Like I just I think is just like with uh, the last episode um, with the stuff that happened in there and everything like that with, with uh, Ellie and then the guy that she shot and everything like that. I think there was like, they were like conveying a lot of emotion, but also not showing emotion. Like, this is just how it is. Like, it's been like this for the last 20 years, you know? Yeah. So it's like that kind of stuff. And then with like the kid in the very first episode or yeah, was it the first episode or maybe the second episode? I think it was the first one. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. yeah so you're just like, yeah, you're like, yep, that's just how it is, you know? Yeah. But like they, I think I think so. I think they do a good job of like all that balance, like you said, with the nature and the emptiness. But yeah, the, but there's a danger <clears throat> and everything like that too. So yeah, yeah. Uh, you know what's the scary? I think of the four episodes, the scariest thing in the show was when Joel's daughter is in the neighbor's house, and in the background, out of focus, is the old woman, and she's like, <laughs> right, like to twitching yeah. and and like her mouth open. It's like something's happening. Yeah. Something's happening. Something's happening. Something's happening. But can't reveal it yet. This show also has that irritating thing of you need to be doing something that you're not doing. Go do it. Stop talking. Let's go. (laughs) And I remember it's like, get in the truck. Get in the truck. You have to go. And they and they're just like, oh, but what happened? Oh, yeah. well, you know, you just uh, get in the truck. You can talk about it on the way. Right. I wonder if it would feel if it feels video gamey to people who aren't <coughs> video game people. I will say that I think that episode four is by far the weakest episode so far. Yeah. It's it's a, it's like the first part of a two parter, and they're actually gaming it. Gaming it. Uh, they're releasing the fifth one early. For streaming uh, ahead of the Super Bowl. Oh, that's you right. Don't, don't, it's coming out on Friday instead yeah, of Sunday. The season finale of this season of football is airing <laughs> next Sunday, so they're like, "Let's get ahead of this." Yeah. Um, yeah. So they're so they're doing episode five early on Friday. Mm-hmm. So um, so that's going to wrap up, I guess, this Kansas City chapter of the saga. Wonder if mm-hmm. there's going to be a nod since Kansas City is playing in the Super Bowl. I was just going to ask his <laughs> the Chiefs playing? I'm, th- I'm thinking that episode of uh, The Simpsons where they're like, uh, don't you guys want to see the Super Bowl featuring the 
Carolina Panthers, and the Denver Broncos. Mm. <laughs> they could do that. They could do that. So just they dub could in, dub it. Yeah. yeah, they just yeah. dub in. Man, don't you remember, you know, when Kansas City Chiefs played the Super Bowl in 2023, which is actually this year because <laughs> it takes place now. It's this alternate timeline mm. of zombies from 2003. Don't you? Aren't you guys glad that we didn't have a zombie apocalypse in 2003? Where were we supposed to? Just in general? Gen- yeah. Just, bro- <laughs> I mean, just broadly. I'm... I mean, uh, it's good that we didn't ever have one, but specifically in 2003. Well, oh, yeah, yeah, because yeah. that would have interrupted the release of School of Rock, which would be a big problem for me. So I'm glad that there was not a zombie apocalypse in mm. 2003. Yeah. It would have uh, really... It really messed with it. It would have messed with, like, Bioshock, the three of them. Mm-hmm. Um, they, we wouldn't <laughs> even have... I actually thought it was weird, especially in the first season, and I, and I kind of... I don't know, kind of reflected on it later, but the idea of you're in Boston and these buildings are tilted over into each other. Mm. Like, how in the world do you even do that? How did that even happen? And they didn't. Well, they said there was bombing. That's so. That's the point I came. But how do you bomb a building in such a way that it falls over just a little bit? Kind of like, eh, I'm just. We're just gonna hug for a while, forever, until one of us eventually fails. So you have these buildings that are like leaned against each other like trees mm-hmm. and it's like that's not how any of this works but it looks Are apocalyptic you an engineer? yeah okay <laughs> Well, look then. at I've got look wow. at all these look at all these knobs. Okay, Nick okay. Raven Are you a reporter engineer. engineer. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Sorry, structural yeah. engineer. Ah, uh, I'm structuring the audio of this right now. I'm sitting <laughs> here he is with headphones. The, yeah, the po- yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I am sitting here in premiere afterwards, listening to you guys yeah. and me. Yeah, and making some of us louder and some of us a little quieter, and that's yeah. just how it goes. And then putting it in a video wrapper and sending it to the internet. Yeah, I just I would just think that like. <clears throat> I don't know that we just build stuff good in America. (laughs) (laughs) And this is our review of episode four, which is how much it impressed all of us that we can't even really talk about it. Like we haven't even talked about the big bad yet. Melanie Malinsky or what? I I believe so. That's, I think that's her name. Yeah. She's been in the half. She she was in uh, ever after. Yeah. Mm. She was one of the daughters or something. She was in that newer movie. With um, the person. Mm-hmm. That's cool. I think that's awesome. pretty much. Yeah. She was. Oh, she was with Elijah Wood. And she's like taking revenge against someone. And he's the murderer. Mm, or the spoiler. person who will murder for her. Something like that. Oh. Yeah. It was like a Netflix thing, if I remember right. Okay. It was kind of indie thing. All right. Anyway, she's the big bad. Yeah. Well, so well, that episode. That and episode. That yeah. episode. <clears throat> yeah. But the real bad. That's that's how impressive episode four is. That that we do, we don't know this character's or remember this character's name. Yeah. We I don't know her motivation. Do we know her motivation? Her motivation <laughs> is to shoot like doctors the in the head. Uh, I guess <laughs> so. Like. Yeah. And you get you get dude with long hair who's like clearly the sergeant at arms or something reporting back on mm-hmm. all the stuff that's going on. You know, I thought that there was a coup happening. Like I swear, like whenever they're like, "Hey, come take a look at this," because I just thought like maybe people didn't like her or something like that. And yeah. The guy was like leading her to this dark room and was just gonna take her out and take over. <clears throat> yeah. Because he had that like he has that presence, you know, of like yeah. I'm just gonna just I'm gonna be the one who's in charge, not this lady. Yeah. That's, yeah. You know. This mom Talk or something. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Just telling people that to go find people. She's like. wearing two coats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can't wear two coats. That's twice as many coats as a lot of us have. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know. It just seemed really weird. The whole, like all of those people just seem really weird how they're just like, I don't know. I just thought that, it was very video game esque. It was very like, video game. Whenever they're sitting there, whenever they're hiding behind the truck, and it's like, "You done messed up now." You yeah, like, the truck drives by with the run call-outs. graffiti on yeah. it. Yeah, like, like I'm waiting for the camera to pull back just a little yeah. bit, and the UI appears, and it's yeah. like, "All right, Joel, let's go left and yeah. try and take these pot it was shots." Just very NPC dialogue. Yeah, like, I was just like, "I'm gonna get you, yeah. stranger." Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When's the Troy Baker cameo? In- James. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I got to reload. Uh, yeah. Got me some, out of ammo. Yeah. yeah. Like some would be like, ah, oh, press X yeah. or something. Just eventually. waiting for him to like repeat. <laughs> yeah. Or he screws up a reload. Yeah. And he's like, ah, damn it. Uh, yeah. Uh, and, and like, uh, you know, he's getting choked out by the dude. Mm-hmm. And you're just like, 
hammer the X and the A buttons at the same time or yeah. cross square and triangle at the same time to get out of this. Uh, and in reality, all you have to do is hit circle, and here comes Ellie to shoot him in the leg. Yeah. That's how it goes. You missed out. Yeah. Or they, you just you know just left it there because you had to go use the bathroom. You just come back, and Joel's still getting strangled out. Before yeah. You, you know, just waiting for you to hit that <laughs> prompt. Yeah. yeah. Or it's just reloading the save. <laughs> right. It's like, all right, we're going to reload the last checkpoint. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to do this encounter again. Right. See if you get it right this time. Right. That and would so. actually – <laughs> that, would actually, that would actually that would have made the game this episode maybe more interesting is like all right here is joel screwing up like 20 times and then the show continues and no explanation whatsoever <laughs> about why and it, it like screws up slightly differently and then like the screen goes red or mm -hmm. i don't know what the fail state is in that game mm -hmm. like <laughs> the last of us is it a quote <laughs> Yeah, you die. Call of Duty. <laughs> yeah, call, call of Duty. Yeah, call. we are now in, uh, embarking on a great journey, Dwight General Dwight D Eisenhower. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, it, maybe it's like Dante's Inferno, where oh. it has quotes that show up from Dante mm. to let you really talking about himself on this journey that he's on. Yeah, that's a little, <laughs> it's a little weird, but yeah, little I get what they're trying to do. So. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I. Gosh, could you imagine it just pops up and it's just quotes by them? Right. It's like, gosh, I hate shooting zombies. <laughs> well, just Do they like, even call them zombies? I don't know what they call them. They don't yeah. call them like walkers. They don't. They don't call yeah, them like the ones they. they call them? Yeah, they they do have the clickers. Yeah, yeah, that's those, I remember yeah. that from the game too. Yeah, but then that it's like, I haven't what played. Are, what I are the that. rest of them called? I don't know. The fun infected. Guys. I, I think they do call them infected. Yeah. I think maybe, yeah. yeah. Actually, it was pretty creepy when they touched the, the magic mushroom and then, like, all of these dead oh. people start animating to life yeah. and rushing the, the Capitol building. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, and the kiss. Yeah, the yeah. kiss was pretty, that pretty was intense. Pretty, yeah, and she cannot freaking start her freaking Zippo, her just regular yeah, yeah. lighter. I forgot about that. I thought that yeah. was just But so apparently funny. that's shot for a shot from the game, too. So I'm just oh. like, I really want to appreciate it. And I guess I'm really appreciating the adaptation. But yeah. as far as a show, them it just makes me a little concerned. Yeah. I still really love the show, yeah. but I'm a little nervous, especially after the lackluster fourth episode. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they've got to have the slower episodes to it. Not everyone can be a. Not every cut can be a single. Okay, <laughs> that's how it goes in this industry. I don't know. Mm. There's there's some <clears throat> other good shows out there. I'm trying to think That'll of another time. how that scene looked like on the PS3 with like far fewer <laughs> polygons and stuff like that. It's just like triangles coming out of the mouth and like, <laughs> like a texture or something. It's like this should be grossing me out, but man, it's so just high definition. Anyway, uh, th final thoughts on The Last of Us. We're gonna we're gonna keep watching it. I maybe okay. Maybe when I said that episode three was gonna be the bad one, maybe it was episode four. Yeah, maybe we're just off. By off. One. Yeah, because yeah. you started late. Yeah, so. that's the, that's what I'm thinking. And then yeah. you, you like screwed up on one of the podcasts, so it's like you're behind. So yeah, it's whatever, a trend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what's going on. Is this so just add one to anything else? Okay, yeah. Yeah. just carry the one. Yeah, just carry forever. One. Yeah, for forever. <laughs> forever. <laughs> Oh, I don't like this story. Yeah. <laughs> uh, before we leave, because I totally forgot, and I didn't write it on. I did write it on here. You have to talk about Poker Face. I have to talk about Poker Face. Yeah. Poker Face is an incredibly good show on <clears throat> Peacock, but I don't want to talk about Poker Face. What do you want to talk about? I want to talk about Skinamarink. What Skinamarink? <laughs> is that on Peacock? It's not on Peacock. It's on Shutter. Are y'all familiar with Shutter? I that Shutter sounds like Island. one of those crackle services that it's like, man. So kind of. <clears throat> it's exclusively for horror movies. Now I'm not the <clears throat> biggest horror movie person, but I've seen quite a few of them. Okay. Like quite a few of just them. Just incidentally. I, incidentally and on purpose. Every October I just like I make it my mission to watch a certain genre of horror movies. So like mm -hmm. I've done like foreign horror i've done classic 80s slasher horror um and uh, other genres like that i really try to like get through those because i don't really not that i don't like watching horror it's just not usually in my scope so i have to purposefully mm -hmm. anyway point aside shutter is actually a pretty cool streaming service does that have event horizon maybe oh I don't do you like it do you like that movie i've never seen it that, okay, that's the movie. That's the horror movie for. I need. To, I do need to see it. Yeah. I mean, and it's Paul. W, maybe, maybe it's Paul W. Anderson's best movie. 
Mm. Which is saying a lot. I know it's a good movie. I just haven't <clears throat> seen it. Anyway, Skinamarink. Skinamarink. Skinamarink went viral. <clears throat> I want to say maybe it was like on TikTok, maybe like even a year ago, because the concept is, and this doesn't spoil anything because I don't know if it's possible to spoil this movie. Okay. 90s style shooting, like handheld camera shooting. Uh huh. Two kids and a dad. The dad disappears overnight, and so the kids are home alone. So we've all seen something either on the internet or a picture or something where it's like, oh, is there, that's a dark corridor. My brain is playing tricks on me. Maybe I can see something spooky down there, but maybe it's just my brain playing tricks on me. Well, the point of Skinmer Inc. was to do that for an for a movie, which I think is a great concept. Absolutely play with psychological horror. But there are so many things that take you out. And so I have a question that maybe this is for hot takes. Give me okay. your hot takes. Okay. Is it the responsibility of a movie to scare you or is it of a horror movie to scare you? Or is it your responsibility to sit in a room in the dark by yourself to prepare yourself? Whose responsibility is that? So is it, does it fall on the viewer to condition themselves? Yes. And to get into the mindset? No. Like playing... Okay, that's fair. I, uh, Kelly says no. I don't know. Like, I think of scary games where it's like, I only play it in broad daylight with all the windows open. And it's like, am I really just playing... Am I, am I playing a horror game at that point? Or am I playing an action game that's really dark? Mm. No. Yeah, I don't no, think so. yeah. you don't see that. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't know. It seems like there's conditional. Maybe. Condi I think there's some conditional, like watching a scary movie in a theater versus on a. I don't know. What, however, the opposite of that. So I'm of the opinion where it is not my responsibility to make sure that I'm <laughs> sitting in a dark room. You can scare me with all the lights yeah. off. Uh -huh. I've seen plenty of movies. Like it's <coughs> why I can't play Prey 2016. 2016. 2017. 2017. Yeah. It. Is something about that environment truly terrifies me. Really? I have a hard time playing that game because of that. I cannot tell you why, but the game did a great job on that one particular aspect for me, for oh. me as as the player. Sure. I think the movie should be the exact same way. You are responsible for scaring me. I am not responsible for turning off the lights. I was going to say, like, Bioshock would freak me out a bit, but Prey 2017 was a little easier. And I, and I am a scaredy cat. I tell you, I don't like playing the scary games. I don't, I don't like... Like the original Thief, scary game. The rest of them, not as much. So but the, first the one, argument but. for Skinamarink is that it is the Gen Z version. The of TikToker? Uh, yeah. Is, uh -huh. Version <laughs> of Blair Witch. Oh. Oh is the right response. If you can't tell by my tone yet, I hated Skinamarink. Oh, okay. That is a, yeah, bubbling I over. I hated Skinamarink, Sk which is why I really wanted to talk about it, because it is getting really viral, and this is one of the love it or hate it movies. Why is it going viral? So. Because there's nothing else why? for Gen Z to do. I, I know. <laughs> Two-minute videos about pie crust and stuff or Skinamarink? I'm not entirely sure why it is sticking with Gen Z, because... It is supposed to take place in the 90s. You've got this grain on the camera that does not represent 90s grain whatsoever. It is supposed to be mimicking handheld because of the amount of grain. Uh huh. Yet there are many shots that are clearly on a tripod that's panning over. So it completely takes you out of it. There are... and, and these are just steady hands. Oh, my God. But there's nobody to be holding the camera. Oh. Because the children are very young. They're like four and six or something like that. They're very, very young. So who's holding the camera? Why does the grain look wrong? You might not recognize it, but it's because it's not 90s grain. Mm -hmm. They have toys strewn around the house that are not toys from the 90s. The house is not decorated in 90s style. So it's completely taking you out of this. So even with Gen Z's like fixation on 90s stuff, I don't know why it's connecting because it's connecting wrong in every aspect. Not even like a like a parody kind of aspect. It's just so it's like who is this for? Wrong. Who they, is this well, for? Because they don't know, so they can't they can't verify. So they but can't to, yeah, and to make it it's worse, like, like who makes a sequel to X Files? Who makes more episodes of the X Files? Who are you trying to get watch that? And, Me. And that's oh. <laughs> <laughs> as, as millennials, people yeah. that already <laughs> like the X Files, yeah, right? Exactly. And I love Blair Witch. I think it's it's 
impressive in the 1999 own. independent in- like most profitable movie of all time <laughs> i like it okay um so i like this genre of movie <laughs> um the first 20 minutes of skin and rink there is zero dialogue which can be fine every single shot is off focus and off center purposefully of course you do not know what you're looking at besides it's just here is a wall cut here is a door cut here is the floor random dissolve here's a different window this happens for 20 minutes and i am not joking and i do not know who has the patience for this movie and I watched it at night. Granted, I was sitting next to my husband, but it's not like we were trying to be distracted. We were trying to give it everything it had. And it was so boring. Is, I do were not they, know. Were they artistic dissolves? No. Well, I mean, they were dissolves. Did they have a mm. purpose? As, as somebody who's an editor, they do not have a purpose. The purpose of a dissolve is to pass a period of time, typically. Was it supposed to do that? I don't know. It did. It passed the period of time in which you watched it. Yeah. Seriously, I I am so confused by this movie. It didn't have a plot. It was not scary. It had a jump scare every now and then that didn't solidify, at least for me. Maybe I am not the right audience. That is the only thing I can guess because I thought this movie was garbage. And there are tons of movies that do this theme better mm-hmm. the, and so I, I can't i can't fathom why it's viral besides that it's just it's slightly different than megan that's out which is actually a good movie there was there was a uh, an episode recently of uh i think it was i don't know if it was half in the bag or best of the worst red letter media where they had it was like the last season or something like that it's this 2010 i think it's 2010 indie film and it sounds exactly like that they have so all of the sets and all the props are made out of eight and a half by 11 paper like they have an mri machine that it's like it forms the casing but then it's just eight pages of eight and a half by 11 on top of it and then like cut to edges and stuff like that and random shots of people and then not people and then, like, the worst audio you've ever heard from oh, yeah. every indie film that has a budget of no money. R- reportedly, it was, like, a $5 million budget, but they must have spent it on pizza or drugs or something. <laughs> Clearly, great episode of, of that show, but they're watching it, and nothing makes sense. And there is no plot, and things happen. That, that was the other thing I was going to mention. So, <clears throat> Skin Marine cost, apparently, only $15,000, oh. which... Again, if this had been a successful movie for me as a viewer, I would have been, like, blown away. Sure. But I love slow, boring movies, which is why I don't get it. <coughs> I love, like, a ghost story where there is a good 15-minute one-shot of Mara Rooney shoving her face full of pie. Like, I what like movie was sl- that? a ghost story. Oh, um, I'll send it to you later. It's okay. it's, it's pretty um, it's pretty particular. Is it scary? Uh, no. <laughs> oh. But it's when we got fifteen minutes of Mara Rooney stuffing her face full stuffing of pie. her face with a pie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And, I, and I love these movies that take their time very quietly, very slowly. That is a genre I really enjoy. So to watch something that I thought was done so poorly in that was almost offensive for me mm-hmm. <laughs> because I enjoy that stuff. So I don't know if somebody is listening to the podcast or watching it on YouTube, course, they yeah. should comment and tell me what I, what I missed. You can what even miss? send us an email to send, send, send us an a, email. Send what did an I miss email here? to podcasts at 6035media.org. That's 60 spelled out. And, Tell us, I am the director of Skin Marink. You don't understand my art. That's fine. That's a good starter, and then okay. you can say okay. whatever you want after that. Okay. Um, and then we can we can talk about that. Uh, what? So you uh, said it's uh, on I, Shutter, right? It it is on Shutter. <clears throat> um, it did go to the movie theater. Like I think it might currently be in one of the movie theaters. It came back to theaters, the theaters or was released to, in theaters for the first time because it went viral. Oh. Um, so it's gotta a- get it, festivals. Yeah. yeah. I, I've never been to a film well, festival. We gotta get that. Wait, wait, don't you, you have to release to get nominated for awards? You have to yeah. like, you have to be in a theater in Los Angeles for, it was like a week yeah. or something to get, so in order to, to get, get nominated. For, yeah. Uh, it's award worthy. <clears throat> Um, Best Skin and Rink Award. <laughs> it's not award worthy. It's also, how long was it? It was something like, it's an hour 40 or something. Wow. It, 
if it would have been like a 20 minute short, it might have actually been terrifying. Mm. Mm. Maybe. Just was, the walls. Just the, God. what if it was just dissolves? A lot of it was dissolves. What if more of it was dissolved? More what dissolves. If, what if, more what dissolves? if it was all dissolved and it what was just all... a grainy, not 90s grainy mess? What if? Oh, wait, yes. it was. Yeah. Oh, wait, it was. <laughs> all right, I'm done dragging skin a rink now. Credits. I was, uh, I was, uh, what if it was uh, one of those things where uh, as you watch it, the bit rate gradually goes down until eventually it's just like pink and gray squares. Like, <laughs> like James about. Cameron behind us. Yes, ex- <laughs> yes, exactly. Or like, let me tell you about JPEGs. Yeah. I would watch a movie like that. It's like we have to resolve – the MacGuffin, get the MacGuffin, resolve the issue at this movie before we're compressed down to 15 bits. Right. And <laughs> then we are completely incomprehensible. That's called the Hot Takes movie. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. We're pretty incomprehensible. Uh, speaking of which, thank you for listening, watching at home. <laughs> thank you guys for being here in the studio, not virtually. Mm. I will never delete that now because <laughs> I'm just, that's just a, a log I've got to. Step over. Just go through that. Uh, but yeah, thank you, Victoria. And, and I've bumped you guys up to co-hosts in the credits now. So wow. Wow. yeah, no additional we could, we pay. Could, oh, dang. <laughs> yeah, there's rank zero. That's great. Uh, Does that mean we technically went down in pay? <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you multiply a negative number by right, <laughs> positive number, it's still negative. That's what I remember. Uh, again, remember, if you have a comment or question you'd like us to answer or address on the air, send an email to podcast at 6235media.org. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe and all that fun social media stuff. Uh, and when you send an email, send put it hot takes somewhere in the subject line. That helps us find it. Not that we get a ton of emails, but, you know. Just it's nice. Case. You know, sometimes it's nice to just wake up and be like, here's an email to hot takes. Well, when the director of Skinnering emails us, I want to make sure he knows yeah. to talk to us. Yeah. And it'll be right after the email from Edward that says, I don't have a question. I just want to let you know that I've been listening to you guys for the past 10 episodes. I'm really happy. You've been really oh. the highlight of the past couple months. You guys have been in existence, so thank you. And it's like, well, that's not a question, but thank you. Oh, that's great. Um, anyway, thank you, and be sure to join us next episode where we eat an entire cheese wheel. We'll have some hot takes for you then, too!